In 1993, Doom, the original, released a log landscape of 2D games with sparing, untextured 3D glorified tech demos, as well as text-based adventures, as was common on the PC at the time, and even simple 2D adventure games on the consoles. Doom was a very different game than anything that had come before, allowing players total control to point, click, and with their own hands execute these humanoid figures. While it seems like a basic concept today, then it was anything but. Shocking to players at the time, becoming then the best-selling PC game ever made, selling 4 million copies on machines that would often cost several thousand dollars a piece, and every major game console. Even Nintendo at the time wanted one on their own system. This was a raging phenomenon, but today we don't look at it the same way. The once gratuitous violence is now seen as a relic of the past, as a standard, as a, of course it hasn't. The feel in this game is lost. It's not seen as a fearful game with enemies behind every corner. It is seen simply as a game. A quick game running at ungodly FPS, all about movement and technique. No longer do players worry about having to master the exact timings of the demons. Clucky controls, unresponsive controls, slow ball bites like there were in the days that it came out. Today, we only see Doom. And Doom is seen essentially as a speedrunning game. No worries about enemies behind the doors. No worries about anything within this game. You do not look behind you. You only look in front, and what you see in front, you push on towards, instead of having to go away from, to gain time and perspective. Now the game never changed. Here I'm playing the original, but with a path tracing mod to give it a more realistic appearance. Now why am I doing that? A lot of people say that path tracing destroys the original artistic vision of games that you use in them, especially if the game is not for it. But I have a different take. I believe that path tracing and technologies like it allow us to see, though not perfectly, what the game would have been like to players playing it at the time. What you just saw is a vastly different experience than what a modern player would have playing the original Doom. And Doom is a perfect showcase of this, thanks to its large amount of mods created by the community, custom maps, textures, resolutions, anything you could want has probably been made in Doom and put on any ungodly thing that can have a computer chip inside it and a couple that can't. But this is the original Doom now. Do you notice the difference? Do you notice the push forward gameplay? Do you notice how, even though I'm playing at the same skill level, the game is far, far easier and no longer feels like a gratuitous, violent experience? Because this is exactly how it was in 1993. But in 1993, it felt like it did in the first clip I showed you. Because it was never about the game. It was about the other games that it released alongside. Doom, as it originally released, is not spectacular today, it's not overly gory today, it's relatively fast, but it's nothing unheard of. There's a dozen boo shooters that released this month with faster movement. The game doesn't have even basic things like looking up and down. Today we see Doom for what it isn't, but in 1993 we saw it for what it is. And that is the beauty of these games. What we hope would be a time capsule often has the opposite effect. Being a relic, degraded by wear, though remaining exactly the same. This is how id Software felt about it. Because Doom, in 2000, a reboot started. Not a sequel, 
Not a spinoff. Not even a prequel. A reboot. Intended to change the game. But what did it change it to? That is the true question. It changed it into a survival horror experience. Why would you change a game like this and make it survival horror? That makes no sense. But it does if we take it back to the first footage. This game, when it released, it was not simply a game of speedruns, a game of going fast, a game of shooting demons. It was violent, it was gory. But that's not what Doom was about. Doom was about existential fear and questioning of one's own actions. Well, even though you were morally righteous, your moral righteousness had to be contested against one's own soul. Questioning what was truly happening and why they were truly doing it. Though told with a simple story, it had fantastic environmental storytelling compared to games that released around the same time. The technology, being impressive, was in an ever-changing PC market. Where every year you had games far outpacing the last. By the time that Doom 3 was greenlit, you'd already have gone through three Quake games after releasing Quake 3 Arena. This was an id software, making fundamentally different games than they did even five years ago. But still retaining the same concept of how they wanted the games to be. Doom accepted that Quake had become about more than the horror. But not with Doom. Doom retained its original ideas and premises. Everything was sacrificed on the altar of horror. The game was confined in tight hallways in the same year GTA San Andreas released. The textures were 256 and occasionally 512 in the year Half-Life 2 and Need for Speed Underground 2 were released. This game, in, in the same year of games like, uh, in the same year of games like Manhunt, did not have overly gory textures or imagery. Because it was all sacrificed on one altar. One altar which games, namely Halo 2, refused to do because everything had to be sacrificed for it. Stencil shadows to create an atmosphere. Because that is what Doom was. Doom was an atmosphere that overarched over everything in the character. Creating a trance-like state, being completely immersed within the game because the game's story is its world. But what they failed to realize was when Doom 3 released, it was too late. Doom was no longer about the existential horror. The technology had progressed past anything that they could have ever imagined. And by the time Doom 3 released, the original Doom, once considered an artistic masterpiece, was now only looked at as a series of movement mechanics. This is the fate that all games go through. Though now with more modern games taking longer, all games given enough time will eventually become simplified down to their movements. Genres in their entirety can be considered outdated when was the last time you personally have played a text-based RPG? Genres evolve and so does gaming. And hardware is just as responsible as anything else. Doom 3 released to a generally positive reception. Though the characters had their heads crushed down to N64 levels. And everything was sacrificed on this altar. It seemed like the right decision to make at the time. But the game did not sell like they had expected it to. And so, they abandoned the IP. Then they went to Quake, having Raven Software make Quake 4 with the same concept. But it too failed. People did not want this modern, 
hardcore atmospheric game that id tech demanded and that's okay because the reason for this is because the original games had lost their atmosphere and meaning after being degraded through time and experience of what else was there in the world id software would go through a long period of stagnation after releasing rage they were eventually bought in 2011 by Bethesda. Id Software then was viewed as little more than the engine programmers that they had. Using Id Software to help make Bethesda's creation engine. Which is why in games like Fallout 4 and Starfield, you'll see Id employees in the credits in the later game. But what Id realized was that the games no longer had the original meaning. And it was about time they accepted that. John Carmack had been forced out of his software and left to join NASA, being known at the time for not implementing even simple quality of life features to make the lives of the artists easier at the same time. Ever obsessed with pushing technology forward for this same reason. John Carmack said something in an interview which, while I don't particularly agree, represents the software philosophy of it at the time. He said that if you want to do a physics game, the more realistic your graphics, the more detail you need, the more you need the wires, the circuits, the more you need the pillars and the beams inside the walls. And this was emblematic of the worldview at the time, how programming was. The more realistic you have it, the more detailed you have it. So the harder it is to run, so the more has to be sacrificed. This was why Doom 3 was tiny, why Quake 4 was slow, and this is why Rage had no interactable objects. This philosophy, when Carmack left, was completely dispensed with. Instead, voting to a system of playing the hits, remaking, and coming back with Doom 2016. Doom 2016 was not Doom as it was originally intended. It was Doom as it was seen through the modern lens. They did not care about the original intent. The game had long been boiled down to a series of movement mechanics and mods. So that's what they made. Doom 2016 is not a particularly showy game. It is pretty. It is a violent game, to a point of course. But what it is, is a series of movement mechanics. At a time when AAA, and indies even for that matter, were utterly terrified of it. Coming off an era where advanced movement was seen as something that would kill games that you couldn't have. Every company, every single one, from Valve to id Software themselves, had sought to destroy movement mechanics in the games that they had. But this was bringing it back. Things like double jumping and bunny hopping, the ballista propelling, the shotgun fling. These were remnants of an era that people didn't necessarily get to enjoy until far later. And through all this in Doom 2016, through all the flinging, the double jumping, the bunny hopping, the glory kills and the violence, you can look around and see the environment and the horror that made up the original and made the original so beloved to this day.